All right, everybody, this is Brian Eslick here from How To Automotive. Today I'm gonna walk you through those steps on uh, changing the rear brakes on your 2009 Mercedes E350. First, we're gonna start by racking the car up, lifting the car up. We're gonna remove the lugs. And a cool little tool I have is this little, these little studs. After you remove one of the lugs, you'll take this, it's a, uh, it's a 1.5, uh, 14 millimeter by 1.5 threads. So you'll take that in there and you put it on. Because if you take all the bolts out, the wheel will just fall on you. And uh, potentially, like, I've had, I've seen it where the, uh, the wheel actually fell off, bounce, and hit the guy in the knee and broke, broke his leg. It wasn't pretty. So anyways, they came out with these tools. You just screw it into one of the bolt holes. And when you take all the lugs up, then the wheel won't fall off. And also when you go to slide it back on, you just you slide it over the stud and it lines everything up for you. So that's what the stud tool looks like after you get the wheel off. This is a bonus tool. You don't really need it, but it, it's helpful. Okay, our next step after getting the wheels off is to remove this anti-rattle clip here. And the way I do it is I just get a flat, flat blade screwdriver like so, slide it in there, and give it a little pry. And pull with one hand, get that one hand so you can do it. And pull it out. That's it. Set that aside. Next, in the back of the caliper, on the back of the caliper, they got this little hand back with it. So right here, they got these little caps. You pry the caps off, they look like so. There's one on the bottom too. So you pry both of those off. After you get those off, there's gonna be an Allen in here. So you're gonna put a seven millimeter Allen uh, socket in there. And loosen, the, loosen and take the two pin bolts out. One on top, one on bottom. So when you pull the two pins out from here, they're gonna look like this. The reason why I pull them all the way out, you don't have to, but the reason why I do it is because I like to put a little lube on these when we put them back together. So make sure the caliper, everything slot, everything slides back and forth. Now when you go to do the, to take the caliper off, it's ready to come off now, but there's always a, a large lip on these, uh, German car rotors here. So what I like to do is get a screwdriver and put it in between the pad here and the caliper and give it a little pry. So once you get it wedged in between there, you give it a little pry. And what that does is it opens up the piston a little bit and it'll allow you to slide the caliper off. So after prying the caliper back a little bit, now it'll come off like so. And uh, what you want to do is set it up. On, I like to just set them up on top of the uh, backing plate there. And now you take your uh, old pads and get them out of the way. Like so. You can see the one out there. So we're going to replace everything. The, the pads, the rotors, and there's a sensor on the other side. I'll show you that later in, in a second. And we're going to replace the, the sensor too. That tells the on the dash it says the little warning light that says your brake lining is worn out. So we're going to change that sensor also. So the next step is to get this cage off. Okay, to get this cage off, what we need to do is get to these 18 millimeter bolts here and here. So I'm going to use this long um, 18 millimeter ratchet here. Put it on so like so and do it. But if you don't have something like this, just a standard 18 millimeter wrench. Take you a little bit of time wrenching it off by hand or a ratchet with an 18 millimeter socket will work. So after removing the bolts, this is what the cage looks like. I'll just set that aside for now. The next step we're gonna do is take this Allen screw right here that holds the rotor on. We're gonna take that off and we'll slide the rotor off. So you're gonna need a T27 Torx that fits in here. Now these usually have what they call a thread sealer or Loctite on these threads and sometimes these are hard to get off. Uh, you can try to put it in there and get a ratchet, use a ratchet and just spin it off and hold the rotor with one hand on the left, your left hand and twist it off with the right hand. But if it's snug or if it feels like it's going to strip or round out the, the head here, what I recommend you use is a tool like this, it's called an impact, an impact hammer or a screwdriver. So what you do is you put your socket on the end, whatever bit you need, 
in this case it's a T27. So you put it in there and, the, and you would twist, twist it to the left, left and then at the same time as you're twisting you would strike the end of it with a hammer. And what that does is it jolts this and it turns it at the same time and allows it to break free. This one I didn't need to, it was already loose. So it allows it to break free. Now that you got the screw out, still it's most likely it's going to be stuck on there so you can see the little bit of rust on the hood. It won't come off. Well what you do is you get you a big hammer. This one happens to be a little shorty sledgehammer. Just any pretty large hammer and you'll strike it right about there. Try to be careful and not to hit the hub. So you'll strike right about there. A couple times. And that'll pop it free and be able to slide the rotor off. So after striking it four or five times, you pop the rotor free. As you can see, now you can slide it off. Okay, at this point, before we proceed to uh, continue the brake job, what we want to do is I want to we want to check our emergency brake linings here. And they, on this particular car, they're looking in pretty good shape and, and uh, nice wear, so there's no issues here. So next, next we're going to do is uh, put the uh, new rotor on. So I'm waiting on rotors to get here still, so I thought I would show you uh, how we do compress the piston back into the caliper. So well, this is one way you would get a uh, C-clamp like so and s leave your old pad on there like that and then twist it in until it took bottoms out. That's one way. Another way would be to have a large pair of channel locks like so and give them a squeeze and, and, and push them in. One other thing, some shops in some places recommend that you open the bleeder screw, but I found on Mercedes Benz, it's not necessarily you can eat, you know just push the pistons back in gently, and you won't have a problem. But if you open the bleeder screw to uh, push the pistons in, you'll have to bleed the brakes afterwards. If you just push the pistons in without opening the um, bleeder screw, you you won't have to bleed the brakes afterwards. All you have to do is pump the brake pedal, and that'll push the that'll reseat the pads. So the next step we're going to do on the passenger side here, of the, um, there is the uh, sensor I told you about, and it mounts right here in this little perch. And all you have to do is grab it with your hands and wiggle it out. So once you wiggle it out, it'll look like that. And then all you do is take your brake, your old brake pad, and remove it from the caliper by pulling it out with your hand. And as you can see, the center is mounted to the, the brake pad itself. But it doesn't come mounted. You have to, the new one will, will push into the new pad. It will come with the new sensor and push it in. So you take that and set it aside. Now we're going to put our rotors back on and the cage back on. Okay, after matching your rotors up, before you put them on, you want to spray them down with a chemical called Brake Clean. Or if you don't have brake clean, you use like mild soap and water and wash the, uh, the, the surface of the rotors off, your front and back. And uh, the reason why is one, and they put like a film of this, uh, this, this I think it's called Cosmoline oil. It's like a, like a type of oil that they put on here to prevent the parts from rusting. So you want to wash that off before you uh, assemble your brake pads. After that, what you want to do is get a little uh, like Loctite is a brand, this uh, a thread sealer, and you want to put them on your on your little bolt that holds the rotor on. Just a little dab, a little dab on the um, on the bolt, the 18 millimeter bolts that hold the cage on. Uh, what this does is prevents the um, it's like adding glue to the threads, and it prevents them from vibrating loose and coming back off. Also, before you put the the caliper cage back on, these little slots where the caliper is line. Uh, the brake pads look right, I'm sorry. Uh, you might want to scrub them down with a little wire brush. And then right where the pads ride, you can put a little tiny dab of a, uh, it's called Seal Glide uh, Lubricant. It's a special lubricant made designed for brakes. Um, you can ask your parts supplier about it. And that lube looks like this, it's called Seal Glide. It's a silicone based uh, uh, lubricant, so when it gets hot, it doesn't break down and run off. So the next step is to put your uh, 
your brake pad warning sensor into the brake pad. So you're going to use you're going to get the pad that has the clip on it. That's the in pad, inner pad. And you slide it into the groove just like so, and you snap it in place. Now here at the shop, what we like to do is we like to put uh, a little bit of that seal glide uh, on the back of the on the back of the pads. But be very careful not to uh, touch the front side of the pad and get grease on the surface of the of the uh, brake pad. If you get grease on this side, any grease on this side is you could possibly get a squeak from it because it'll uh, it'll get super hot and you kind of make a hot spot on the rotor. So. To prevent squeaking, what we do is we try to prevent prevent from touching the uh, surface. So now we're going to put this pad in the caliper. So you're going to poke the sensor through the big hole, and then push these those clips into the piston, like so. Next, you'll take your outer pad, put it on the cage like so, and put a thin layer of uh, seal glide grease on it. Now you're ready to take your caliper itself and slip it on over, like so. Right now we're going to take our pins, caliper pins, and we're going to put a little bit of the seal glide on, the, on these pins and slide them back in there. And there are little boots where they come out of. So what I like to do is put the caliper on and put the pins in. And kind of push them in with your fingers until you feel them go in the holes where they where they mount inside. And then you take your seven millimeter rat, um, seven millimeter Allen here, and tighten them up so they're snug. Okay, after the the Allens are tight, the next step is to take the uh, sensor wire here and put it in the where it belongs in the little holder sensor holder here, the connector and push it in. And that's it. Then we have one more step is to put our, um, our anti-rattle clip back on. See if I can do it one-handed here for you guys. The way I do it is I, uh, I hook the little ears on the outside like so and I just push and rotate it in just like that. And just make sure that it catches here and here. And give it a little pull like that and make sure it doesn't pop back off. Next, we're going to put the wheel on and torque the wheel down. Actually, before we put the wheel on, we're going to put we're going to put our little caps back on the, the dust caps. That keeps dirt from getting inside the pin pins where it uses slide. So put those back on. Now we're going to put the wheel on and torque it down. To do that, I'm going to use my little tool. So I'm going to slide that in like so. Just thread it in like so, and then we'll slide the wheel over the stud and then put the uh, the lug nuts back on. So now that the wheel's on, then you can just put your uh, lug nuts in your, uh, like so, and start them really easily. It's a pretty cool little tool. And you start all the lug nuts, tighten those down. Once you get those tightened down, then you can just remove the, uh, the stud tool here, and then uh, torque your wheels. And that's how you uh, do the rear brakes on your 2009 Mercedes E350. And as always, it's my pleasure to share my experience with you guys. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below, and I do respond. And I'd uh, uh, like to invite you guys to follow me on Facebook at uh, How to Automotive slash face or Facebook How to Automotive. Once again, thank you for watching my videos.